Okay, so I just wanted to record this for you to show you how I would test a sample project. So I have this example here. And in the Visualize, so this is Codasys version 2.3. This is a program uh, that, or a project that I created just so that we could um, look at how it's set up and then test it. So for ease of use in the visualization area, so the third tab along, I've created this called task. So this is, and all I've done is drop the task in here as a bitmap so that we can see it. And this task says that uh, cylinder B should extend, then cylinder A should retract. Once that happens, cylinder A should extend and cylinder B should retract at the same time. There should be a three second delay, then cylinder A should retract, then extend. And that should happen four times. So it should uh, retract, extend, retract, extend, retract, extend, retract, extend. So four times. Then after that, cylinder B should extend, then cylinder B should retract. And after that, then we're back to the start of the sequence. So that is the sequence. So you can see I've got two cylinders, so it's a two-cylinder sequence. I've got a three-second delay, so I need a timer, and I've got this repeating four times, so I need a counter. Then I've got this other information here, uh, which is key. Um, well, this isn't key until you actually build it for testing on the Festo rigs. But it does tell me that cylinder A and B are double-acting cylinders. It tells me how the system should start. So. Uh, a normally open momentary push button should start the system. In point four here, it tells me to use an appropriate double solenoid valve for cylinder A and a solenoid actuated and spring return valve for cylinder B. So cylinder A has a double solenoid valve. Cylinder B has a solenoid valve with a spring return. Um, and that's, that's important for how I set up the project. Um, you'll see when I test it. Again, items 5 and 6 are uh, important when you actually build the physical test. But we're not interested in that at this point. So uh, that's the task. The visualization then looks like this. So I'll minimize these so that I can see them side by side. So it tells me of cylinder A and cylinder B. They're double acting cylinders. It tells me that I have a, a, an indicator switch to tell me where each cylinder is. So switch A0 will tell me when cylinder A is fully retracted. Switch A1 will tell me when A is fully extended. Switch B0 will tell me when it's fully B is fully retracted. Switch B1 will tell me when cylinder B is fully extended. It also tells me about the solenoid valves. So cylinder A has a double solenoid valve. So you have a solenoid S1, which will make cylinder A extend. You have solenoid S2, which will make cylinder A retract. On cylinder B, you have solenoid S3, and that makes cylinder B extend. But you've got a spring that makes it return. So if solenoid S3 is on, the cylinder will extend and stay extended. If solenoid S3 is off, the spring will force the cylinder to retract and stay retracted until S3 comes back on. So I've also set up a start button. And I've just shown these two. I know I've got a counter and I know I've got a timer, so I'm just showing, indicating uh, what these do. So I've done the normal things that you would have seen on the YouTube videos. I've um, brought in my IO, uh, 8 digital in, 8 digital out um, module. In my global variables, I have created my start button, each of my switches, and they are addressed to the inputs, percentage IX 2.0 through to 2.4, and the solenoid valves, again, they're created and they are addressed to um, QX 0.0 through to QX 0.2. I have a timer one, and that's a ton style timer. I've a counter one, and that's an up counter. And then I have created these variables, timer one input, for use in my program, counter one input and counter one reset, and their uh, build style. 
So I've created those. Um, I've also created these uh, items within the program. So I've got a counter um, program and within it, counter one sets ready to be called whenever um, it's triggered. Timers are similar. Timer one sits in here, ready to be called. Um, I've got the sequence, so this is where I've done the actual programming, the case statement. And um, in here, in PLC underscore PRG, all I'm doing is calling the other programs. So they're just program calls. Uh, so back to the sequence, so this is the important one. I work out which switches need to trigger each if statement. And then I program it through uh, a case statement right the way through the sequence. So that's the setup. Um, I'll just show you how I test it so that you're aware when you're testing your own programs. Um, if I go to the visualization, I'll, I'll just um, bring this down slightly so that you can see it. And what I also want to show you is, I'm just shutting these bits down, I don't need them at the minute want to show you this bit so that we can work our way through the sequence. Uh, if I go online, make sure I'm in simulation mode and log in and online and run. So what I'm looking at initially before I hit the start button, I'm in run, but I'm looking cylinder B has to go out the first thing that it has to do. So that means currently before we press the start button, that switch is active. Cylinder A has to go in. So before we push the start button, it's actually sitting out. So cylinder A is sitting on switch A1. Cylinder B is sitting on switch B0. That's me ready to start. So I hit the start button. First thing to happen is solenoid 3 comes on. And that's correct, because the first thing I want to happen is B to extend. So if that comes on, B is going to extend. As soon as it starts to extend, it'll roll off this switch. And when it gets fully out, it'll roll on to this switch. So that's OK. It's fully out because the switch is now in that position. The next step is A needs to uh, go in. So if solenoid S2 came on, that means that cylinder A is going to start to retract. As soon as it starts to retract, switch A1 will go off. Switch A0 will come on. At this stage, you can see a couple of things happened. One was when A switch A0 got triggered, S2, S1 came on. That's going to make cylinder A extend, which is what we want. And also, um, S3 went off, so that's going to make cylinder B retract. So both of these things will happen at the same time. So that switch will go off, this one will come on, that'll mean cylinder B has retracted. That switch will go off, and cylinder this one will go on, cylinder A has extended. So that's that step. Also, whilst I was talking there, you saw the timer lapse. So we got the three second delay, which is correct. And then S2 came on. So we're in this stage now. S2, uh, solenoid S2 came on, and that'll send cylinder A uh, in the retract position. So it's, full, it's now extended because switch A1 is triggered. So we, we move position. It moves from fully extended to fully retracted. And you can see the count went to 1. Put it back. So it went out again. So that's one repetition. Cylinder A retracted, A minus, and then cylinder A extended, A plus. So that was one repetition. And it, you can see the solenoid came on again to make it go back in. So off and on, S1 comes on to make it go back out. That's the second repetition. And that'll happen. There's a third repetition. So the solenoid valves are indicating where the cylinder will move to and the switches are telling it where they actually are. So that's four repetitions, so we've got this bit done. And you can see on the fourth repetition, solenoid S3 came on. That'll make cylinder B extend, so it's going to move off this switch and onto this switch. And now uh, solenoid S3 went off, so the spring now will make it go from switch B1 back to switch B0. And we are back to the start of the sequence. So I would always run through that twice. To, to, I'm just doing it once here because I don't want the, the, the video to be very long. But I would run. I would just hit start again and go through the cycle again. So that's how I test 
of the system and it's correct. So hopefully this helps.